as I say, uh, as I say, science is because I feel science is boundaryless. So there are always uh, interconnection between sciences. And you will, you will, uh, in India, or we, 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 the man, we, the human beings, make those boundaries, uh, like physics, chemistry, maths, biology. But nature does not do that. So we need to be always natural as possible, and we need to combine these different branches to solve real world problems. So that is why, say, I, I try to combine chemistry and biology. That's my field. There are many people who combine maths and physics, for example, and also chemistry and maths. So they're always interconnected and they're always, uh, there is the boundary is very thin. And uh, that's why um, uh, before I go ahead, uh, let me tell you a little bit about my research interest. So research interest in the sense, uh, it is not that I'm uh, pursuing all these areas, but I have interest and we are forming some collaborations. But in broad sense, it is chemical biology. Chemical biology in the sense, understanding the chemistry in the biological systems. So what I feel that when I started out as Professor Ramkaran, uh, Dr. Ramkaran has also pointed out that I started as a chemistry, then went to biology, but I, because I felt that there are a lot of unsolved problems in biology that require a eye of a chemist or a vision of a chemist. So, and, and he's also said that there are many Nobel Prize laureates who in biology won uh, own uh, prizes in are from chemistry. Similarly, same chemistry Nobel prizes are owned by biologists also as well because they are interdisciplinary. So we we try to introduce such a field at uh, my workplace or anywhere I go. It is chemical biology. Currently, we are working on organic chemistry of enzyme catalyzed reactions. So chemistry is still the stronghold. Okay, but we want to study how enzyme carry out reactions. You know, uh, every reaction in our body uh, right now going on are catalyzed by enzymes, whenever you, you eat, for example, you eat rice, the glycolysis has started, then it will go to Krebs cycle, then it will go to ATP, uh, ATP generation pathways and you get energy in the muscles. But those, all those reactions are actually chemical reactions carried out by enzymes. Then I study biosynthesis, that is meaning uh, synthesis in the living beings or in the living systems of natural products which are bioactive, meaning anti-cancer antibiotic. For example, you probably have heard of the name penicillin. Penicillin was not, by, not made by human being. It was made by fungus. Fungus is a living being. So how did they make it? So that is how the field of biosynthesis has evolved. We are using say amoxicillin now is a man-made derivative of penicillin. Synthetic biology that I am interested in, that is, uh, we all know synthetic chemistry or in, in, in area, although I, I tell something about chemistry, but this is applicable to other areas also. We'll, we'll come to generalized versions in a little while. Okay, synthetic biology is nothing but you make, you use organisms to make molecule for you rather than making by yourself. So they, that, that kind of pathway or we are trying to study and you can reduce the step of an organic synthesis person uh, using synthetic biology. I'm interested in clean energy. So biofuels and bioenergy is one of my interest area. I am trying to collaborate with some of the engineering departments. So that is one of the beauty in IIT where you work collaboratively or in, in close relation with an engineer where a scientist can stop thinking at after some point an engineer may pick up and or engineer may have some other ideas. So that is where I'm collaborating with mechanical engineering people who work on biogas and others. Then recently I have developed some interest in COVID-19, which is the, the pandemic. I have nothing to say, you all know it. COVID-19 is the current uh, hot topic and the virus that is known as SARS-CoV-2. We need antivirals. You probably have heard of the name remdesivir. What is remdesivir? It is nothing but an antiviral compound to treat uh, the viral infection. Okay, now we are taking all vaccines. Vaccines are nothing but the organism itself, they, they are mutated. For example, that is why we think we chemists has a lot of, uh, lot of uh, area to explore in this virology. So that I'm collaborating with some medical doctors. So I have a small team, only three students, uh, because I have started only one, one year back, maybe one, one and a half year. So we'll, we'll, we'll make the group bigger with time. But I have a lot of collaborations. So I collaborate with biology department, Professor Surya Pratap, uh, who works in uh, different biological field. Uh, I have collaboration with NUS Singapore, uh, National University of Singapore, Professor Brandon, who is in the Department of Pharmacy, but he is a chemist. So you can see um, pharmacy and medicine is always related to chemistry. Then Professor Rangi Lai, who is my classmate actually in, in USA. Now he is a professor in Suranari University of Technology in Thailand, which is one of the top universities in Thailand. Um, then Si Hui Dong, who was, uh, was my postdoc collaborator, who is in China. He's a professor in China. So I have uh, communication with him also to do something together. 
So you can see science has no boundaries, as I say, in disciplines as well as in, in abroad. If you go abroad, you will see there are a lot many Indian people or a lot of people from, from India and abroad working there. And you will fee, feel India is very close when you go to USA also. It is not too far. So, okay. I'm talking about this COVID-19. I'm collaborated with, with Professor Ram at Department of Medicine in Karnataka Institute of Medical Sciences, which is a medical college. Then biotechnology, I'm interested in the biofuels and bioenergy area. So that is, uh, I'm trying to do with a biotechnology is HOD in this KLE Tech in University. So this place is a lot of universities and uh, now AMC is also coming. So AMC IIT is already there, IIT is here. And now AMC is also being located at this place. So it will be a good education hub in the future. So Professor Viswas is neurobiologist. So I'm working in some proteins. And I have a long collaboration with an agriculture person who is at ICAR or Indian Institute of Council of Scientific uh, Agriculture Research in Port Blair in Andaman Nicobar Islands. So I teach organic chemistry. As I said, um, I'm from a chemistry background, as well as I teach chemical biology and medicine and uh, life uh, and, and biology related areas, as well as I teach a uh, course in mechanical engineering in energy, so biofuels and bioenergy. That is, uh, these are kind of my teaching. With that, I'll go, go back to the... Uh, Go back to the, the, the topic, why we sci study a science. Here I name uh, chemistry, but it is applicable to others also. As I say, the science is boundaryless. So chemistry is a natural, uh, is a branch of natural sciences, which helps us to understand the world around us and the nature in, 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 in general. So chemistry has four different disciplines, but these disciplines, we made it. We made it. Organic, which deals with carbon compounds, say inorganic, which, which deals with uh, other elements of the periodic table, physical, physical laws and chemical phenomena, you know? analytical chemistry, which talks about the analysis, quantitative analysis, etc. Now, this chemistry is related to biology. As I said, all the reactions happening inside our body are actually chemical reactions. We need to understand that. And you, you, you can see most of these Nobel Prizes in chemistry are actually chemistry, which is happening in the living beings. It is related to medicine, I have already said, and agriculture. So all the pesticides and chemicals and all the, all the, um, the fertilizers we use are nothing but chemists. Environmental science, we talk about global warming. We talk about, say, uh, ozone hole, which is nothing but a, related to chemistry. Geochemistry, anything beyond the surface of the art, it has also some chemistry component and physics component. Geophysics is also there. Similarly, chemistry is related to physics. Physics like nuclear, nuclear physics or nuclear chemistry is nothing but a core physics area and with some teams of chemistry. So that is a chemical physics, you can say. In addition to that, chemistry is also related to advanced application-based sciences, such as material science, okay, which is becoming very hot, and, and nanotechnology and chemical engineering. Okay. So before, um, I, I, I encourage all the students and the participants here to review the talks of Professor Dr. Ramkaran in the previous, as, as he mentioned, and as well as Subham and Nitin, who guided the students with various entrance exams, as well as career path. So my will be, some will be overlapping, but some will be maybe new. Okay. So you, that those talks will be a primer to my talk. Okay. Now, as I said, study options after class 12. And I have started from 12 because I thought school, uh, we can make a separate session for school students, but this is mainly starting from class 12 and higher studies. So at class 12, I have given the title choose carefully because it's the interest that should guide your studies. It's not somebody forcefully uh, do that. For example, your, your parents or your society or your like mama, chacha, interest as he said that aapko engineering maths and physics to engineering is not that easy okay biology may interest hai to medical jana it's not that easy so isiliye uh, that's why it is very important to choose carefully the field but every science student may opt for this engineering so this is this is the most common exam joint entrance examination it is conducted by nta national testing agency we all know it and now you all know about JE mains and JE advanced. So physics, chemistry, and mathematics are important subjects. So you cannot ignore any of those subjects in your class 11 and 12. And let me tell you, many students make the mistakes of coming to class 11 after class 10. There's a huge jump in the syllabus and huge jump in the course structure. Class 10 tak utna um, syllabus thoda halka rehta hai. But when you go to class 11 and 12, the syllabus becomes very high and the content becomes also very rich. You need a lot of time and motivation to follow and to crack these exams. So JE mains and JE advanced are required for engineering colleges, you all know. 
then this this phase also and, uh, let you take admission into bsms program so these are in the isers isers are nothing but uh, indian institute of science education and research those were designed mainly in the with the uh, leadership of professor cn rao you probably have heard he is a bharat ratna from chemistry department and he um, uh, in the lines of iisc to to guide the science education in india so those there are seven i think seven isers right now who offer this kind of courses and j offers an entrance for those you can also study interdisciplinary courses in iits so there are btech and bs courses some interdisciplinary courses that are available in the iits also in my our iit and other iits was chemical science and technology which talks about chemistry and its relation to industry engineering physics physics as well as in this uh, relation to engineering so maths and computing here mathematics and computer science together uh, do this kind of program so that science and engineering can be blend so this kind of ideas are actually taken from big institutes like mit caltech jahan pe where the boundaries are very less and engineers can work with the scientists biotechnology of course and chemical engineering so these are kind of interdisciplinary courses which you can go right after class 12 by uh, by by clearing je now if you are interested in uh, medical you all know neat is an exam common exam many many states and medical institutes have their own exams but Uh, but for all of them physics chemistry and biology are the important subjects so you can see physics is common in both chemistry um, and chemistry is common in both um, actually or no these both are common biology is required in medicine and this is important for mbbs courses now if you are interested in defense there is also one test known as nda this we all know that uh, many students may want to go our uh, join our defense services very good good idea and it is conducted by upsc this test is somewhat simpler than j mains but uh, you can you can also write if you're interested in that and then if you're not interested in pursuing there other uh, other professional courses i'm not going into that but in general people may go for bachelor of sciences if you're not interested in doing this professional courses then also you choose the subject which like you the most for example i i was interested in chemistry in class 12 so that's why i have chosen chemistry but uh, you can you can have your own interest <clears throat> okay now bachelor of science here i have again said that give your best why did i say that i said that because uh, many of the students uh, i i have seen i have interacted with many graduate students that means graduate meaning bsc or ba level students some of them are very demoralized and discouraged and in fact there is there is a uh, there is a there is a component of uh, that uh, discouragement from their family or parents or 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 uh, or society because they they used to be uh, they said like that you have not got a seat in engineering or medical that's why you are doing bsc it is nothing like that so you can study sciences and you can do as good as possible as as a engineer or medicine there is no harm in it you can you can study sciences for your own interest and developing um, developing developing the society we need scientists as well as engineers as well as medical doctors the society has so many different uh, sections that uh, we need to we need to cover all the areas so we need best students in that in those disciplines so whatever you are doing sciences don't do it just for sake of doing a bsc or ba you give your best and do best in that okay so one question come where to study so you can you can go to colleges affiliated to different universities in your state now there is a problem here so many students i have taught in 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 masters level for netgate and others in when i was in delhi i see there the basics understanding in the bsc level is not good because there are many colleges um i i don't want to name but the basic education in the bsc level is not very good because teachers are also not that motivated to teach bsc level they take it is not that necessary but you need to choose something that is reputed one and you know that teachers are good you you can go to those colleges or you can choose some of the colleges in university of delhi from the northern northern area if you want to even south also i have seen any students from south going to university of delhi because those colleges impart very holistic education and the curriculum is very well developed and uh, many many questions actually in jam are are actually obtained from uh, the syllabus so north campus ones if possible or some south campus one are also very good in in sciences but but there is a there is a but because uh, they need high cut off so many subjects have high cut off uh, so you need to have good score at least pcm if you are going for science subjects or art subjects at least based of four at least 80 plus so that you can get a admission in one of those colleges 
you can also go to some good colleges in other places for example kolkata kolkata has many good colleges in sciences residency st javiers there are like uh, you will see many people in jam coming from that place because sciences are uh, studied like that way in 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 places that kolkata had a, you all know kolkata had a very well um, established uh, scientists from that place then other places mumbai chennai many big places have good uh, educational program undergraduate programs i'm not saying that smaller places have bad colleges but you you need also awareness only study is not enough you need awareness that after doing bsc what will you do so in smaller places maybe you you can miss those information nowadays with these webinars and online you you will get but at our time there was no such information so we had to if i have not come to delhi probably i had not got the chance of going to iit how to go to iit how to go to abroad so those things matter in the, in some cases then resources okay so here i want to point out that uh the role of textbooks is very important so many many students uh what they do the problem is they mostly read teachers notes okay they will mug up the notes before the exam and they'll get a good good exam score because the equations are repeated or they are not syllabus is not revised but that is not going to help you in the long run okay because any any uh, entrance exams what uh, subhaman nitin has probably discussed in the previous slides jam and all they will require quote pro understanding of the subject core concepts problem solving attitude time management and you will need good textbooks so you read good textbooks in physics and biology i am not going to refer because uh, you have many uh, many you can go ask your teachers like uh, i know some like say azar ghatak is one of the optics person ds mathur mechanics is very good arasni galide you know as well as some other books such as uh, griffith in electrodynamics those are very good books but you can refer to your teachers similarly biology areas kindly refer to your own um, physics uh, and biology teachers for proper textbooks you can also search online but, but for organic in chemistry i want to say that you can go for good uh, standard textbooks which are followed all around the world they don't have a reason so morrison and boyd solomons even clayden which is written by cambridge university professors Kerutters, Kerry and Sandberg. So some are advanced level, some are needed in MSc, some are needed in bachelor level. So you make a base and have a habit of studying good books. So it needs some. There is a, there is a, there is a. Many people have a activation barrier. So we call it in terms of uh, chemical kinetics. There is an activation barrier. So once you pass that activation barrier, it is easy to read uh, those uh, uh, advanced textbooks. Indian author books are also good. They are simply written. but sometimes they miss some of the important information that's why you also need to study so physical you can go for these books at kens macquarie and simon castellan kel kapoor is very popular in university of delhi but you can also go for foreign author book at kens sexually i have interacted once he came in uh, university of delhi so he is a such a voracious reader and and a great um, uh, great um, um uh, educationist so his books are very popular in different areas of chemistry in organic and analytical you can go for jd lee james hughey Cotton and Wilkinson. Cotton was a professor at Texas A&M, but I unfortunately I could not meet him. He died in 2007, so he is very, very, very popular um, uh, in organic textbook and Vogel as well as Coog and West in analytical part. Biochemistry you can go for Leninger, Steyer, Boyd and Boyd. So these are some of the standard textbooks, and you can also follow some of the other books that your teachers might have uh, suggested. There are many online sources. Recently, it is known as NPTEL. NPTEL is National Program on Technology Enhanced Learning. So this is a program of MHRD, and it is done by uh, now it is Ministry of Education, not MHRD anymore. Uh, by IITs and IASC, those uh, teachers actually have these programs, and it is completely free. So you can you can register and you can take the course and you can give the exams and materials are available. SWAM is also such a course, and I feel IGNO materials are also prepared by very uh, well researched persons. So you can also prepare some of those materials. and video app best you all know about an academy khan academy all those uh, are many videos in youtube but i will never suggest that youtube or youtube videos can be a substitute to your textbooks so that is a supplementary information and who will uh, who will access the correctness what the speaker is speaking for example so sometimes they are not even authenticated so those things you need to think about so textbooks are main you can take additional help from from these materials which are available online okay now once you have done a bsc degree whether in physics chemistry or or botany zoology what is your that you come to a crossroad crossroad in the sense you need to decide again that are you still interested in the subject 3 years is enough 3 years is enough for making you aware that subject is like you are liking the subject or not for example 
for me, I like the subject. That's why I pursued. For example, Sri Ramakrishna sir has liked the subject. That's why he pursued all the way up to PhD. And it is a long commitment. I'll come to that in the later slide. But after BSc also, if you're still interested in the subject, go for MSc. Otherwise, you can, there are plenty of options. There's no dirt of options in, in for a graduate to find a job or study something else. So you should it should go it should go according to your interest so interest uh, i'm 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 emphasizing that point from very beginning you can for msc you can go for state and central universities we have a very good well group of central universities there some are new some are uh, some are old and they are in the making so you can you can apply for and they have their own entrances for iits nits and some of these advanced institutes do uh, you have to go for this jam entrance test so previously it was uh, it was um, individual test now they are they have conducting this jam test there are many reputed private universities say sibnadar or even um, ashoka university for arts art students so you can also go for those kind of private universities who have a very good curriculum and a faculty profile you can see in ashoka university many people from stanford harvard are teaching there okay you can also go for ms abroad ms abroad uh, meaning you can study abroad so there are the, the pathway is same. You have to go through GRE, TOEFL, as Sir has mentioned. I'm going to give a slide on that. But sometimes scholarship not, option is not available in MS. So that is the problem in uh, some in some countries. Some some countries, if you're a well-to-do family or if you get a loan or something like that, you can you can definitely go for this kind of MS programs. But I'll suggest MSc programs in India are not bad. So you can always go for MSc here, and you can go for for the studies abroad. We'll discuss in the later slides, okay? Now, there are some particular scholarships which are very competitive. So for example, I have seen Rhodes Scholarship. I've never heard of this name, but I, when I was doing, I one student from St. Stephen's College in physics, I think, he got a scholarship to study in Oxford University, for example, for three or five years or so. That scholarship is like five scholarships per, uh, per subject for entire India. So it is very, very competitive and, uh, and it is not known in smaller, Places. So you need to have these ideas, how to apply. You can go to different um, websites to see how when to apply. And you need to have a good uh, academic background uh, to, uh, to do road scholarship. There are Cambridge also have other scholarship and other university in Germany have other scholarship. You need to explore this option if you want to go for MS abroad with, with scholarship, not with your own funding. Own funding, you can go anytime. Okay, now uh, joint admission to MSc, I'm not going to elaborate, just one slide. Subham has already did a great job last time. So it was started in 2006. I was the second batch. Actually, I, I have taken the exam in 2007. 2006 was the first. Previously, there were only seven IITs back then. It was It is an IIT entrance for IIT students uh, for studying in IIT. Uh, who, those who have missed, say, in the JE, you can study uh, in the bachelor level or you can study in the master's levels also. So... JAM is conducted by some of the IITs and IASC Bangalore. Um, and it is concept-based questions are asked at the BSc standard. So that's why textbook reading and clearing your concept, problem solving is very important. And all three disciplines are important. So if you're interested in organic or one area of physics, say condensed matter physics, it is not going to enough. You need to have all the areas covered, optics and everything covered to crack these exams. Okay, total seats in MSc chemistry, is about 1200 uh, this was told by some of the one of my uh, friend in the coaching institute that they 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 have a a list of these seats iits and nits there are about 21 iits who offer msc right now and nit is about 22 out of 31 nits and the rank based admissions happen so depending on your rank your preference you can choose one of those to study your msc program and these are general msc program so there is a difference between general msc versus a specialized msc so many, many, many universities, state universities have this specialization in the second year. Sometimes it is good. You get a good uh, knowledge about a particular subject. But sometimes it is detrimental because in the GATE and NATE, all those exams, uh, uh, you have been asked uh, for the entire syllabus, all the, all the subjects equally well. So if you have a general MSc, if you focus all the different areas, same chemistry, organic, economic, physical, then you have a high scope of uh, scoring in MSc. In, in these kind of uh, gate mate exams. So that is why IIT MSc is, is a high success rate in all those, all those areas. And there's a lot of elective courses. IIT education is highly, um, I will say there's no, um, there are some core courses and there are many elective courses. You can take a course in economics, you can take a course in medicine if you want, 
uh, an MBA or business. So you can you can broaden your skill set, and it is also project oriented, and this is accepted for integrated MSc PhD programs in the other institutes. So it is a common entrance test. You should all aim who are in the second year. So from second year onwards, you should think of this this exam how to get the information, previous year question papers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, if you are not interested in doing uh, MSc, I have coming to the other option. You can always give, go for a job. So um, uh, any any graduate degree, uh, not only in chemistry, any other is applicable for all these jobs that I'm going to say. And this was also highlighted by Ram Karansar in his talk. Um, so civil services is one. Many people go for civil services, UPSC civil service. Now, uh, there is a combined civil service and it is highly competitive. We all know that it needs a lot of preparation. You can also aim for that. This is then there is IFS. IFS is not here, Indian Foreign Service. This is Indian Forest Service. So IFS is uh, Indian Foreign Service is conducted in the APSC combined civil service. So forest service is eligible only for science students. So that is a high advantage for uh, science graduates. So there is no competition from art students or any other, other area. So you can aim for Indian Forest Service. Then PCS, of course, your state PCS, Public Service Commission, there are uh, advertisements from time to time. Then if you have, uh, if you're interested in defense and if you could not clear the NDA test in the class two, you can again uh, go for uh, go for these kind of um, defense services by doing combined defense services exam. This is conducted by UPSC, followed by a staff selection board interview. So I have a friend who is a chemistry graduate. I'm in I'm in touch with him. He is in, from Hindu College. He's a now, uh, I think, a captain. Now he went through CDS and now he's a lieutenant. And he's going to become a, um, I think, um, a major or so in a, in, a, in a captain or major, something like that, in a very soon. And he is uh, he's actually a BSc chemistry. So he had a lot of a lot of examples in our in front of our eyes. I have I have students. I have uh, my batchmates who are. POs in say SBI or in, in other banks. So they have chosen the banking industry and they have prepared a long way, but then you need a graduate degree. So if you're interested in in, um, in this kind of jobs, you can always go for it. Public sector undertakings, there are some chemistry specific jobs and physics specific jobs in some of these public sector undertakings, which are entry level. So their payment is not very high, I would say. and Probably um, you, it will be better if you are interested in those PSUs after masters, if you clear gate, there are a lot of opportunities in these kind of PSUs. Private industry also have, uh, uh, for example, chemistry, have pharma industry, paint industry, cement and cosmetics. But again, the point is that a bachelor level student is not very well paid and uh, other uh, uh, things come into play. So if you are interested in these core related areas, so it's better to get a master's so that you have a better specialization and more options. So master's will give you more options. But these other 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 services, there is no need of any master's in chemistry. Teaching, if you are interested in teaching and you want to follow that patient, you have to go for a BA. So I have I have I have my batchmates who are doing teaching in a college or in a in a school and, and higher secondary level through uh, by clearing this uh, teacher's eligibility test. And you can also teach uh, as a TZT science teacher in KVs and JNVs. They are very good jobs and very uh, job security is there. And state government also have a lot of uh, interviews in these teaching positions. So if you, you can always go for those. Additionally, you can increase your skill set by studying something professional like MBA. You have to go through CAT, you know, CAT and uh, MAT, all those, uh, all those tests, which are uh, very competitive also, the Master of Computer Applications you can do, MCA. So I have many friends from this uh, from this BSc. I think only two two students have ended up in the faculty positions. We had 27 students in our batchmate as BSc. So I am a professor and another, another, another my fellow is a professor in, 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 in Delhi University College. Okay, all others have students with other careers. So one of the one of the person is a, uh, gone to IIT, uh, I am Indore, I am Lucknow, and they have done doing very well in various companies uh, abroad or in, in, in India. I have seen people students going to journalism. So they are uh, one of my friend is a um, editor in uh, Hindustan Times. He's a he's he's from chemistry background, but he chosen journalism from Jamia Millia, and then he went for this kind of career. So there are no dirt of opportunities if your interest can take you. So you follow your passion and law also. And there are many other state government jobs which will come periodically, but they will be highly competitive and many other factors are there. So, but you still look up, look for those and apply if you're necessary, if you're interested. 
but in all those uh, this quanti other than your subject whether physics chemistry or whatever quantitative aptitude general studies and logics and reasoning so these general awareness thing has been introduced in all these subjects uh, whatever you go for bank po cdsc or civil services this this is a must so you know to start improving those maybe from your third year or you can take a small crash course or anything like that in those areas and these are also required for gre and TOEFL. I'll, I'll come in a little while okay and some jobs are preferred after msc as i said now um, if we have oh i'll 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 flip over between these two options interested versus not interested because it is it is it is your heart that should tell you what you should do not by your your parents or forcefully by your seniors or anybody else so your you should follow your call of your heart so if you're interested uh, if you have done a master's degree then again the option come what to do because then the road is very long then the road requires very dedication passion as well as commitment so that is the phd then it's called doctor of philosophy uh, i don't know why it is called doctor of philosophy but it is doctor of philosophy in the sciences whatever subject you have chosen but it is a long process don't do phd for the sake of phd okay so it is if you want to do phd you do it dedicatedly in a good lab and you want to understand the subject then you will you'll, you'll enjoy this uh, enjoy the subject okay or you can still do some professional courses which is known as mtech these are programs, master's level programs, through gate in IITs or NITs in specialized areas. For example, in chemistry, there is corrosion science, there is some industrial uh, training which, which are directly applicable to industry, which will give you direct entry to industry positions. You can go for a MTech also, polymer science and technology in plastic industry, it is very important. So this kind of higher study you can do. But if you have chosen to go for PhD, think twice, maybe 10 times, because it is a long road, PhD will not stop. Then thereafter, more study, more study, more study. I have seen people doing three, four postdocs. Um, so you can see uh, it is a long road, a lot of dedication is required. If you're not interested in the subject, you can always go for all the jobs, which I have said in the previous slide, all those are applicable. In fact, you are more eligible. In fact, you are more eligible in the subject. You exam to give civil services, which were taken after BSc, MSc ke baad syllabus zyada cover ho jata. In fact, chemistry syllabus is like MSc syllabus. So there is, those kind of things are important in your MSc. So uh, if you're interested in job, you can always go for and study, you can go for MBA also after MSc. So those options are always open, okay? Now I'm going to higher studies. Since this is not about any job, this is mostly about studies. So uh, higher studies like Doctor of Philosophy. This was partly covered by Dr. Ramkaran in the previous uh, talk. So these are available in the YouTube, you can see. I have again given the title commitment and dedication. Commitment meaning commitment from your heart and commitment from yourself. Dedication is the time that you'll require to reach that stage. A PhD is not a joke. It's not a joke. And a lot of, lot of pressure is, whether you do in India or abroad, it is the same thing, but it is, it is the motivation that should guide you. And there are a lot of failures. There's a lot of failures. Somebody, some wise man told me that in a years of work, there is there is probably one week or two week of calm, or two weeks of work. Uh, so there is only one or two weeks of work is that is publishable. Entire year is kind of hate and trial, trial and error. So it's a lot of frustration, a lot of those things are there, but that you should be prepared for those. We have crossed that stage and I was, for me, until fourth year of my PhD, there was no result. Can you believe it? So until third year, I was doing, trying different projects, nothing is working. So, and there, I mean, they target very good projects, for example, and there's always high risk, high risk, high gain. Those kind of projects are there. So that's why I say commitment and dedication is required. Then if you want to do in India, there are many good institutes. These are already covered, but I just want to say that uh, IIC, TIFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, all the IITs, all the ISERs, NITs, they offer good PhD programs. You can choose the guide, his previous publication. You can go for the website. Then the CSIR lab. CSIR is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. It is a governmental body to look over the science edu education and research in India. So many industrial uh, labs are there for physics, NPL, NPL Ahmedabad is very, very good, or Harish Chandra Research Institute in Allahabad is very good. For chemistry, NCL Pune, you can say, or IICT Hyderabad, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology. So those kind of institutes are there, CSIR labs, where you can pursue your PhD. There are independent research institutes are also there, the NCSR say. Then uh, central and state universities, there are many good central universities 
Hindu, uh, what is that, Banaras Hindu University, uh, Hyderabad University, also Punjab University, and many new universities which are doing very well, and reputed private universities. But you need to look for their calls. They are like twice in a year, uh, in June or something, and then another in December. So you need to look for their advertisements when they advertise. But then you need a fellowship. Fellowship means funding or pesachi. Because at that age, by doing MSc, you reach a stage like 23, 24 years of age. At that time, it is kind of uncomfortable from your parents to ask for money. So you need money to sustain yourself, to support you, and to support I mean, uh, your family also. In fact, if you're not from a well-to-do family, the scholarship in PhD, say, right, right now it is about 35,000 you get. So that is a good amount of money because inside IIT or inside in, a, in another institute, your your uh, education is highly subsidized. You don't have a lot, lot of fees. Fees nahi hai zada. Aapka khane pine ka bhi kharcha utna nahi hai. So you can save a lot of money. My student saves, he says, 25,000 a month he, he can save and he can send to his house also. So those kind of, uh, you need some uh, assistance. So there are some uh, fellowships and eligibility criteria to get this fellowship. So GATE is one eligibility criteria. GATE is not a fellowship by itself. It is graduate aptitude test in engineering. So although it is engineering, many subjects are tested. It is conducted by IITs and IAC. And once you clear GATE, your wherever the institute you have applied and you have got admitted, the institute will give you the uh, fellowship or the money and it will come from Ministry of Education or it is MHRD fellowship, you can see. Now it is not MHRD, Ministry of Education. Okay. So other fellowship is, is, is a direct fellowship. So which is known as CSIR UGC. And you all know that it is conducted by the CSIR and University Grants Commission. Now, University Grant Commission has their own GRF in various other subjects. So it is conducted in many subjects. So chemistry, all the science subjects are covered. And it is also important for lectureship. So if you want to teach in a college, uh, less, less, less uh, maybe the lower rank ones, ones because the scholarship amount or uh, the number of students is limited, 150 or 200 or so. So beyond that, they give uh, LS to many other students who can teach and they're already qualified to teach that. Nowadays, the exam pattern has changed. Most of both are become objective type, but still you need the conceptual basis as well as the problem solving attitude to complete the exam on time. Then for biology, dbt -GRF is very well, so good source. Uh, probably chemistry students are not eligible or even if eligible, you probably have, do not have that much of biochemistry or biology background to crack this dbt -GRF. But if you have a good biochemistry background, go for it. You can go for DBT GRF also, Department of Biotechnology. ICMR GRF, ICMR is Indian Council of Medical Research. It is for biology related areas, biology, microbiology, biochemistry, cell biology, you know, all those areas, even biochemistry is also there. So if you have a good background, you can also crack uh, ICMR GRF and study one of these colleges. So because since CSIR, UGC, GRF seats are limited, you can try this kind of um, GRF options. DST Inspire is one which is mostly given by the Department of it's given by Department of Science and Technology, and is given to university toppers, first rank holders, or if you are a DST scholar, Inspire scholar from class 12 onward. So those kind of application procedure is there, so you can apply. It is this money is same same as other other institutes. And if you want to do a PhD from abroad, this is a different ball game altogether. You need to have uh, crack other exams, GRE, TOEFL, the names you have heard. Let me tell you a little bit more about how to crack because I have given all these exams except ILTS and uh, many of my friends has given and their experiences what they have felt and what is required for cracking these exams. Now, PhD from abroad, many students may feel that it is it is a very far, I mean, it is out of our reach. So many students coming from say, remote places uh, and uh, poor background, they may think that it, it requires a lot of money. It is not like that. PhD karna utna, paisa or uh, uh, uske liye utna problem nahi hai. So it is very important that you know how to do, how much money is required to go for a PhD abroad. Uh, if, if, you can, uh, if you can gather that much amount of money, that is enough. After that, your PhD will be fully funded. In fact, you can support your family from there. Okay, you'll save so much amount of money as a PhD scholar in USA or somewhere else. Okay, now here I want to say that GATE has uh, 27 subjects in total. A list jo hai, yahan pe 25, uh, 25 subjects are there. So, yahan pe, um, two more subjects recently added. So, I'd say for sciences, say biotechnology. Previously, it used to be only life sciences. Life sciences, ke abhi biotechnology may be badal diya. So, so, biology students, in fact, have 
two options now. They can write biotechnology exam as well as life sciences exam also for this kind of um, gate clearance. Chemistry is of course there, geophysics and physics. So physics is there and geophysics, mathematics and statistics. Mathematics and statistics are somewhat correlated. You can write, uh, if you're a mathematics graduate, probably you can write statistics exam also. Then of course the life sciences. So these are uh, science related, others are mostly engineering related. So recently humanities and social sciences and environmental sciences has been also incorporated. So you can see GATE is no longer engineering. So many, uh, many branches has been taken. As you can see, our new education policy recently um, after just after the new cabinet uh, direct um, PM Modi had a meeting with the new um, education minister Dharmendra Pradhan and the um, director of the IITs and IACs. And the main motive and the agenda of that meeting was to have holistic learning and um, liberating, li liberal art, art learning. That means um, incorporating interdisciplinarity from the graduation onwards. So that's why IITs are now uh, asked to follow this national education policy. In fact, from school level itself, it should, uh, from ground root level, so that students uh, get motivation about all different subjects. And that is how the education is conducted abroad. If you see Germany curriculum, US curriculum, or UK curriculum, they are holistic learning. A, 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 um, let me tell you, when I was doing a, in, in, my, in, my, in my PhD, I was do, as a teaching assistant. One student in my class, uh, chemistry uh, major, he was, background was music. You can imagine a student from music can even has a himmat, malab, courage to take a chemistry uh, major. And later on, he did well, actually. So uh, this, the curriculum is made such a way that students from any discipline can learn any discipline. So that is the holistic learning. Okay, now if you want to do PhD from abroad, um, you have to take this examination. So there are some big names here. One is GRE, Nam Sunaoga Apne. Its name is Graduate Record Examination. This examination name, मतलब ये कोई कोई top नहीं है. It is very easy actually for a student with a graduate level education and little bit of English and maths background. Okay. It is not related to So online, you want, and uh, it's, uh, it's conducted by uh, Educational Testing Agency, I'll leave in a little while. It is applicable to many countries. So GRE is a common exam. It is applicable for master's and PhD programs. Anywhere, uh, many other countries, these are just a few names, uh, who, where you want to study or say you want to go abroad. It is conducted by educational testing service, just like the NTA. Na, NTA ka concept bhi saide in sab sahi laya gaya tha. NTA uh, national testing agency jo hamlo ka hai, jo JEE or medicine conduct karate. Usi tarah educational testing services is also a website which conduct these courses. So you just go to this website. A lot of information is there. When I was giving the exam, it was sixteen hundred marks. So 1,600 marks may say if you get 1,200, it's very good score. If you get a 1,500, you'll get admission into MIT or Stanford or Caltech or something like that. Nowadays, it is total marks is 340, but the concept or the content of the exam is same. So one is verbal reasoning. So verbal reasoning is nothing but English. So English like your vocabulary, kaisa hai, uh, how you know. And if you are from an English um, instructional, if you are English mein instruction raha hai, if you have done schooling in English, then it is very easy. I mean, synonym, antonyms, use, use of words, proverbs, all those grammar, grammatical uh, uses in a, in a language, those kind of uh, testing is done. And quantitative reasoning is nothing but 10 level maths, maths, arithmetic, aega, uh, algebra, geometry, some trigonometry, calculus. So it is like class 10 level maths in our CBSC syllabus. So that is required. But there are some books that what exact topics are covered. So I'm going to highlight those also. And the third part is analytical writing, where you have been, you be, will be given a small topic to write about a particular essay. So I don't remember what was given to me, but it was something like your childhood and your inspiration, something like that, a small essay that where you want to, they want to see where, whether you can write in proper and correct grammatical sentence. So that is what I feel many of the students miss. And then even students come up to PhD, paper properly sentence structure so that is writing is very important and while recruiting PhD students this is one of the big criteria for me how they write even when I see the email with full of 
uh, like grammatical mistakes i'm i'm pissed so kind of those kind of so those um, those kind of things are important for uh, english language and you need to be because outside the medium of instruction is english that is why you need to focus on this kind of things there is subject gre so agar aapka ye gre kharab gaya if you if you scored and let me tell you out of this 340 if you score 250 plus it is considered to be a good score so recently one of our btech student got a good university at in carnegie mellon or so he got like 340 plus or something or oh, 300 plus some good score one got at washington state so those kind of uh, universities uh, 300 plus is a very good score you can go for any other good universities so subject gre is is additional it is not mandatory many universities ask it so it is only for some subjects chemistry biology physics mathematics english and psychology other subjects are not included so for our talk i think fine because amar uh, amara sciences mein almost all subjects are covered so it is a subject and it is up to bsc level if you do a bsc level um, syllabus uh, the subject the gre test is a very easy for you then the another uh, subject um, test is known as toefl toefl is as the name suggests test of english as a foreign language so it is um, it is the testing your english language skills how you uh, i'm going to tell a little bit about toefl in the next slide it is a online test it is also conducted by ets it is mostly for us canada etc north america then there is ilts ilts is uh, same same as toefl but it is mainly uh, applicable to european countries and you know, uk australia those kind of countries either ask for toefl or ilts some may prefer only ilts so you need to see which uh, requirement and there there is no advertisement no deadline for this exam so whenever you are ready you can log in and register in this website and you can schedule or you can schedule your exam when you want to take like 3 months later from now and then on that day you can go to that particular center and you can give the test and it will be results will be declared immediately you don't have to uh, on the computer screen it, it, itself so you don't have to wait for the result so you can apply next day actually so this kind of tests are done online now let me tell you a little bit about toefl toefl mein char uh, there are four sections which are been tested one is reading reading matlab comprehension when you read a paragraph passes whether you can um, whether you can uh, answer the questions based on that so it is like a comprehension it is there in class 10 english class 12 english if you are so you are very comfortable if you want to do that if you are interested in that listening listening matlab aap kisi ka conversation sunke ya kisi ka dusre aadmi ka communication sunke can you can answer his questions so you will have a you'll have a a uh, headphone and you have a speaker like this like i'm speaking and then then uh, someone will be asking the question it is a computerized voice and you have to answer so your voice will be recorded and your answer will be recorded so that means what he is saying can you listen and can you understand what he is saying so that is the listening part then so there will be a short break and then is speaking speaking section is you will be given a small topic to say uh, something a few words just to understand whether you can speak a little bit Ang english for example i feel i mean i should not say this uh, people from uh, say most of the many asian countries like like china they have lot of problem killing because they are up to their masters level their language of instruction is mandarin mandarin is the highest spoken english uh, language in the world that is the chinese language so that is why their english some of many of the students have this problem of english uh, uh, cracking this speaking portion so mainly the speaking portion and many universities have the cut off in speaking so you need to have this exam is for 120 marks and then uh, but india fortunately we have most of the media of instruction is english so we speak english in many of the uh, our thoda bahut to communication ho hi jata hai so you will be able to do well i mean uh, there is no problem for me i come from mera uh, education be most apne regional medium mein hua tha then i pick up english from my uh, navodaya school and then but still i mean it is still kind of a uh, it is okay i mean so you you should uh, understand that speaking is important so even if it is wrong you can sit in or stand in front of a mirror and speak something in english you have if you have that problem many of the students maybe in the of fearing like a hasing ge log ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए वो आप बोलना वो कोशिश कीजिए और ये होगा नहीं इफ इट इज इट इज नॉट टू हैपन जस्ट नाइट आफ्टर बिफोर डेट 
मुझे मोस्ट ऑफ एग्जाम ऑब्जेक्टिव होने से वो ट्रैकिंग करने में ठीक है मतलब वो गोला घुमाने में घुमाने में ठीक है बट लाइक उसको अच्छे से लिखने में उसको एक्सप्रेस करने में स्टूडेंट्स फिर भी चुकते हैं आई सी स्टूडेंट्स इन द बी टेक आफ्टर क्लियरिंग डे ही वेन दे कम फॉर दिस बी टेक फर्स्ट कोर्स आई टीच केमिस्ट्री कोर्स दे हैव दी प्रॉब्लम ऑफ एक्सप्रेसिंग because in coaching centers in kota they have been told how to do in a short term and a short and language and they don't know how to write in a full full language a simple sentence so uh, that is not how it is going to do in if you are going for tofl exam so writing is very important so each section has 30 marks time is about 3 to 4 hours it is a computerized test and here i am uh, i have written one word is learn to type fast because wo likhna haath se nahi wo likhna computer screen pe hota hai so that is why कंप्यूटर टाइपिंग बोर्ड पे सो दैट इज व्हाई टाइपिंग का स्पीड थोड़ा सा मेहनत बिकॉज़ देयर इज अ टाइम टाइम लिमिट टाइपिंग थोड़ा करना सीखिए बैचलर लेवल से सो दैट्स हाउ यू विल बी एबल टू क्लियर दिस 80 प्लस इज अ गुड स्कोर व्हाई आई एम सेइंग टॉयफल पर्टिकुलरली बिकॉज़ टॉयफल में ही पाते हैं सो मेनी यूनिवर्सिटीज आस्क फॉर 100 प्लस 100 प्लस मीनिंग 25 इन ईच सेक्शन और maybe you got 30 in this section section speaking mein aapka 15 aa gaya to usme aapka kharab ho jayega and many universities have specific cut off for speaking so 20 plus lana hi hai to is tarah ka cut off bhi hote hain so this kind of uh, restriction are put in the university websites during application so you need to look for this some it is enough uh, and uh, some uh, crash course or coaching bhi aapko karna hai to aap kar sakte hain agar english background aapka theek nahi hai but this is the this is the bible i will say barons Barons GRE and TOEFL is the best source for uh, source for preparing. Three months is good enough. You can do uh, you can do preparation during your uh, graduate uh, or post graduation study. And the second uh, book set series is Princeton Review. This is also very good. I have not I have seen it, but I have not preferred to. Barons is a. Uh, wordly um, in synonyms so if you he terrific um, you may be given a synonym you know what terrific means and you don't know what that word means so those kind of synonyms and antonyms exam so i need i have i have remembered abhi to sab bhul gaya lekin at 3000 words you need to by heart and you need to apply in the languages then you use a flash card flash you write this word in a like a visiting card hota hai na us tarah ka flash card you can sciences may these are um, abroad may there are many inst many institutes north america is us and canada us have so many universities top 100 universities if you want to take many good universities and those are ranking i don't believe in those rankings too much because this ranking has a lot of parameters okay so many good uh, sometimes you will see people get nobel 
price from University of Missouri. Say. Last year, University of Missouri. Missouri is not probably in one of those top 50 universities. So good science happens in many of those smaller, smaller universities also. But this ranking, so you should go for the website. You should do look, look at the uh, professor's profile and how he is doing. Uh, contact Canada may problem can only 10 you know, good universities are there, like McGill or McMaster. And those Calgary are some only but 10, so the options are very limited. So USA has many options. Europe countries, UK, Germany, Switzerland, and all of them, all of them have different criteria. So I'll just focus one or two. France and Nordic countries. Sweden, University of Uppsala, probably you have heard. Um, then Denmark may have University of Copenhagen, very good. So these are some of the universities in those countries. Asia, Japan is very good for science. In fact, in publications, uh, uh, probably China is leading now, for, followed by USA and Japan. So Japan is very good in science, many novel. Singapore has very good, some of, not very many, two, three universities are good in sciences. South Korea has very good universities in Seoul. Israel, you know, Israel have a lot of novel. Israel is very good for sciences. A little bit disturbed geopolitically, but uh, many good uh, Westman Institute of Science and Ilan Bar University. Many universities are there, which are very good in sciences. Hong Kong, there are some other good colleges that are in other countries. Australia, you can think of Australia also, Australia and New Zealand. Their admission procedure is completely different. So we don't have time to cover all of them. But these are some of the countries where you can think of going to uh, for a PhD in sciences. Now, how to apply? So here I have given only example of two because this is come from coming from my personal experience and there's nowhere written these kind of things. So in applications, say, uh, this is coming, say, in the USA, how you want to do, you have you have given the exam in in in, in GRE and TOEFL, apne nikal liya. Lekin apply kap karna hai aur uska admissions kap ye hota hai. So those things are important and those things are not written many, many places. So... Uh, Ramkaran sir has given some hint in the previous uh, presentation, so you can look that one also. So, uh, for example, uh, here I have taken, say, chemistry ranking. So here, although I hate this ranking, but anyway, you can choose from this uh, ranking. You can see many universities are there. Their websites are listed, how to go there. So, Thorasa, internet, ka, uh, you need to explore. Websites exploring, that is very important. Askal, because of this... Um, because of the smartphone age, all the students have access to internet data plan. So other than using, uh, other than, I mean, wasting your time in uh, with, uh, using or looking, watching YouTube videos, which are not necessary, you can uh, visit some of these websites in your master's level, say, and learn more about this. So if you do this uh, ranking, you go to US schools, there are many universities, say, these are top 10 universities in USA. For example, Caltech is number one, now Harvard, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley and a Northwestern Scripps Research Institute, University of Illinois, where I did my postdocs at Columbia, Cornell. So these are many universities, these are top 10. There are many, top hundreds are fine. So out of those universities. So you need to, depending on your scores, you need to select some universities in these different ranks. For example, if your score is 1500, or now in this case, say 350 or 320 plus out of 340, you can choose out, out of this top 10 and you apply, maybe you will get admission to one of those. But if your score is less or 250 or so, probably top universities may not want you. They have better candidates with better GRE scores. So you choose, you apply in different ranks. You maybe top 21 or two, top uh, 51 or two, and some some there in the lower lower, uh, so that you you secure your admission in one of those good universities. Those top 10 universities, those universities, you based not just any random university, based on your um, interaction with the website and their professors, the research they do, and based on those. Otherwise, if you select some university, random university, and you go there and you got the admission and you find that nobody is there in your interest area, then how will you do your PhD? So those things are important. So department websites, that's I said, you go to people and write emails. So sometimes writing emails also help. For example, my case was an accidental one. I was uh, Texas A&M University, what Ram Kransar has said, was not even in my list. It was... Uh, it is, um, I think, at that time, 15 or 16 in that in the in this particular list, because I thought I will go to New York and people only know about New York, California, those kind of things in in about America. But there are many good universities in smaller places. There is Urbana Champaign. Sorry, 
uh, is my screen sharing stop hello yes. yeah okay. now it's good yeah you are back now screen. okay sorry i have just two more slides to finish yeah yeah sure sure go ahead you are getting so many good comments and questions you are doing amazingly great uh, i must say that is very enriched very nice flow and yeah. uh, uh, everyone are, is enjoying it so i'm getting so many good questions and good comments yeah. for you thank you so much thank go ahead you. thank you i just will take maybe another 10 or 10 minutes so what i want to say that my choice was accidental why i am saying that writing email this is my personal experience and with my 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 friend who was doing phd in i to delhi he did not like he had a he did not like the subject or something like that he wrote a email to university of cincinnati in ohio so that is university of um, you have probably heard of ohio state university it's one of the good universities so um, always think do not think about mit caltech stanford harvard some universities are there they are so good in many this john hopkins john hopkins is so good in medicine okay so good in number one in medical sciences for example it is even with stanford Okay, so those those universities you need to go only when you will understand when you will go to their websites and their work. Okay, so uh, he wrote an email to that professor. He said that you can come in the next semester. So then he gave the GRE exam and gave the TOEFL exam. He got admission to uh, Ohio State University next semester. For me, I wrote an email to a professor. My professor was Taik Begley. He is a chemical biologist. I like, as I said, I like biology in chemistry. So I wrote an email. He was at Cornell University at the time. So Cornell was out of my score. I score my score was something like twelve twelve hundred or thirteen thirteen hundred something like that. So Cornell was like top ten or something like. So I wrote an email to him. He said you'll probably get an admission here, but if you want to work with me, you can you apply to Texas A and M because I'm moving to Texas A and M with my entire group because they have a very good very good lab. Probably my lab was shown by a professor Dr. Ramkran in the previous slide in the interdisciplinary life sciences building, which was even better than Cornell his lab in the Cornell. So. So he got a better grant and everything. So I applied there. So I applied there, and I, um, I, uh, which was not even in my list of uh, universities, and uh, and I got admission there. So I wanted to work with him. So I went there and worked with him. So I got uh, admission from six universities: so Ohio State, Wayne State, um, then uh, one in John Hopkins, and there are many other universities. But I had chosen that one because it was good rank also, and my I, I like the professor and his research area. So those kind of things matter, and no website will tell you. These are my personal experiences and my friends' experiences. So you can write emails. Don't hesitate how to write the email. If you need assistance, please ask me or Ramkaran sir. Because don't write a, a just a random email. He or she may not like that. It has to be properly structured in a polite way. So that email writing is an art. So uh, sometimes, बात मतलब आप बोल बोलना कुछ चाहते थे कुछ और बोल बोल लिए so this kind of uh, interactions are very important so if you want to write an email ask help from seniors or from us if you want then requirements lor recommendation letter is required which will be given by your professors bsc professor msc professor ya ab main yahan pe masters level pe aa gaya theek hai masters jo kar rahe hain uske liye ye important hai bsc level ke professors ka bhi aap recommendation le sakte hain statement of purpose uh, it is written by you so that is also has to be properly structured there is a art of writing statement of purpose here where you should to highlight what area you want to work if you want to name a professor one or two professors then the university will have a idea that you have at least visited their website you have at least interacted with the faculty and the profiles uh, otherwise they they are impressed in the in your sop itself so how to present yourself so that was actually covered how to present so presentation is very important writing and presenting educational credential of course transcript your mark sheet transcript matlab mark sheet so class matlab uh, at least uh, msc mein 7 ke upar cgpa agar aap rakh sakte ho to achhi baat hai in in university 70% ke upar agar aap rakh sakte ho so that is considered to be a good score 80% is like mashallah theek hai exam scores an application form exam scores meaning gre toefl some score some universities require subject gre also so phase na hota hai online okay now fees many universities are free so you can in those ten universities that i am talking about say many universities in texas are free say in am university of texas at austin and many public universities the public university matlab which are government universities so here the tiger universities are public universities but chief nader is a private universities in this list hardly few of them are public universities caltech is private harvard is private mit is private 
heavy private. These are all private universities. So they charge a lot of money during their application and their uh, education process. And they're because of which they get very good students and also their, uh, their funding is very high. So you can choose some universities which are free if you are only considered free universities or application free universities, okay? Usual timeline. So complete exams by September, October. So if you are in second year of MSc, so you should start preparing in your second year. So your July session starts. So you can July before you start the exam. You exam in September, October. And there is no deadline. If you have given your GRE, you can give it to you tomorrow. There is no as a clash. Nahi hai. So you can uh, or a one, one month ka gap rakke bhi de sakte hai, because results to immediate aayega. Then apply in November, Feb, Feb, November to February, because many of the deadlines of the universities are in the December, November. And some has up to, say I applied in the University of Sunny Buffalo. So Sunny Buffalo uh, gives uh, up, to, uh, up to March, so March next year. So you have a lot of time. So the early application say, uske liye aapko jaldi prepare karna padega. Results are declared in March and April. So depending on uh, your application, three, four months lag time. So results will be declared. So you should also understand that many people, many students from across the world apply to these US universities. So competition is so expensive. So your credentials and your SOP, your exam scores will matter. So if any professor in that committee has your SOP, and he said you have taken his name, for example, then your case will be pushed. Say. For example, it is like that. In so sometimes you, you, you have a luck. Luck factor also makes sense. Apply for visa. Visa, you're getting US visa is not that easy. So visa, time and session usually starts in July, August, September, depending on the universities. So you have to plan in your second year. I planning uh, late. Kia. So what I used to tell that I have was doing, see, uh, this I was teaching in the college. I was actually um, and let me uh, mains also, but I was interested in uh, in 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 research. So in the meantime, I was doing uh, in this. Um, I asked myself, I want to dedicate myself to administration or academics. So that's why I went to academics at the end. So that is why um, that is why uh, my my preparation was late. So 2018, uh, 2008, and. Now, I, my friends has already went from my MSc batch, 11 or 12 students went to UN by master's in 2007. So if you're interested in research, don't, uh, don't be late. So you can plan ahead and people are there to guide you to save your time because PhD is very long. Okay. Expenses kitna aega? Ye bohut interesting question hai. Bohut student puchte bhi hai mujhe. Ek chiz yaan pe expenses se pehle mein bata deta hu. You need card. Ye koi nahi bata aega apko. Credit card chahiye hota hai because wo ETS mein registration karna hota hai. Debit card ya na bank transfer also nahi chalega. Because it is a base thing USA or I think UK. Uh, USA kamtai hota hai. Maybe debit card mein also work. So aapke father ka hai ya kisi ka. Maine apne mama ji se udhar liya tha. Let me tell you. I took from my mama ji because I do not have a credit card. My parents. So I, I took help from my, my uncle and he was generous enough to give his credit card. I paid back the money, whatever I have used. But uh, so, you to do it. So, Exams ka kharcha kitna aega? Each exam is like 7,000 rupees. So, 7,000 is like 150 dollars, you know, 150, 100 dollars, depending on the dollar value. 750, 7,500, 8,000 rupees ka leta hai. So, do exam diya to 16,000 or depending on if you give three exams. I had three exams, I had 21,000 per hour. So, 7,000 per hour was time. Now, it increase ho sakta hai. Application materials, matlab ye, ana, recommendation letter, vezne ke liye courier chahiye, na, educational credentials, and a exam scores vezne ke liye bhi online, wo, which fees let hai, $10. So, wo sab bhi hai. So, hai, wo 15 to 20,000. Visa process, visa process apply karne ke liye, 100, abhi, abhi recently I have helped someone for US visa. So, he is $150 lagta hai uske liye. So, ek visa ke liye. So, US visa ke liye $150, which is like even to, now it is 8,000 rupees, 9,000 rupees. So, wo chahiye hoga. And one thing is that is service fee, bolte, but that is another thing that, that is also $100. So that is about 7,000 rupees. Flight and travel. So this is the initial flight, hai, wo no university will sponsor you. Of course, scholarship will get there after reaching there. And all these PhD programs are sponsored. You will get scholarship. Like, uh, let me tell you, a lakh, uh, 1 lakh rupees. Uh, itself. 
so depending on where you stay so texas was highly i mean uh, cost effective and affordable the other places will save some life us us fellowship mein guzara achhi tarah se chal jata hai flight hai yahan se america tak wo 40 50 000 lagta hai so wo thoda sa aapka initial kharcha aayega so that that means overall totaling 1 lakh ke aas pass 1 to 1.5 lakh jo agar aap jugad kar sakte hain kisi se udhar mang sakte hain then you can pay him back once you go then go there scholarship mila usko de diya theek hai na so us tarah ke aap wo kar sakte hain but initial kuch kharche aayenge it is not but the study is absolutely free and you will be able to enjoy okay then one country i want to uh, want to uh, cover other than usa Germ- uh, canada may be same pro- germany mein bahut students jaate hain because there are many good universities you know germany has 318 universities more than probably us and they offer 14000 programs in different areas okay why tuition free education tuition nahi hai koi fees nahi hai you can if you want to go for M- ms uh, ms abroad jo main bol raha tha germany ke liye bahut pop- one of my project assistant who is working in uh, in uh, in as in a project here she got her admission in uh, technical university of munich which is one of the uh, in biotechnology but she has to only worry about her living expense um, and but no fees for the ms program okay so those kind of things are there world class education top universities uh, us ranking ke bare mein uh, ram karan sir bata rahe the many good universities in the world ranking are from german german universities I mean, many scientists are from German. Uh, Albert Einstein, se leke, De Broglie, tak, uh, chemistry. Me, kitne sare scientists, Max Planck, you know, sab German scientists are there. So science is very popular there. And many of instruction in in English. German, agar six six sakte hain. If you want to learn German, or if you have a German background in your, you know, uh, graduation or plus two, it is very nice. Job opportunities hain wahan pe. Scholarship opportunities hain. Lot of scholarship opportunities are there. Living cost is affordable depending on the city. Okay, where you are. If you are in Berlin. or if you are in a mega city like frankfurt so wahan pe to bahut kharcha aayega but peripheral peripheral area mein but ek good point hai that many of the major universities are in smaller towns jahan pe kharche bahut kam hai time required for phd is less so 3 years mein german mein chemistry mein phd ho jata hai many of my one of my friend who is my my junior in hindu college delhi university he got uh, he did phd then he did the msc in iit madras i went to iit delhi say then he he did msc uh, phd from germany now he is a professor in iit goa but he went to industry later on but his phd was 3 years while my phd took 5.5 to 6 years so the us may 6 5 years it lag jata hai kyunki wahan pe course work hota hai teaching load hota hai you need to teach although their program is very good actually you need how to teach but germany mein course work nahi hai so phd is like 3 years so phd ho jata hai you can spend more time in the post so cultural diversity people from all around the world will come you will have to interact रिक्वायरमेंट्स क्या है वही ट्रॉयफल है जीआर इन एच ए जर्मनी के लिए मेरी ट्रॉयफल है नाइल टीएस उनका खुद का एक एप्टीट्यूड टेस्ट है उसका नाम है टेस्ट एस वो कोई कोई यूनिवर्सिटी मांग सकता है वो आप देखिए ये वेबसाइट है स्टडिंग इन जर्मनी यू कैन गो टू दिस वेबसाइट एंड यू विल हैव लॉट ऑफ गुड इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट स्टडिंग इन जर्मनी एप्लीकेशन फॉर्म है सर्टिफिकेट्स एंड ट्रांसक्रिप्ट सो योर वो तो है ही फाइनेंस आपको दिखाना रहता है सो यू कैन टेक अ लोन आल्सो इफ यू वांट इफ यू स्टूडेंट लोन आप ले सकते हैं और आपका मॉर्गेट पेपर कुछ भी दिखा सकते हैं लैंड सो समर बट वॉन्ट यू गो देर यू कैन गो फॉर द स्कॉलरशिप अपॉर्चुनिटीज बट पी एच डी के लिए स्कॉलरशिप है मास्टर्स के लिए थोड़ा ये फाइनेंशियल मीन्स आपको दिखाना पड़ेगा जर्मनी गुड यूनिवर्सिटी यूनिवर्सिटी रिसेंटली इंटरेक्टेड विद वन ऑफ दी थीम फ्रॉम जर्मन यूनिवर्सिटी सो आई आई हेयर coordinate uh, the interaction of iit with, uh, with canada universities i coordinate with the university of new brunswick and university of saskatchewan and the uh, university of italy and recently naples italy came and born university of germany so these these universities sometimes come and we interact with those people and they have this kind of programs very cost effective and learning for students and students learn to go to germany and it is also closer as compared to us okay so it is very close like 7 hours flight as compared to 15 hours flight to usa okay heidelberg university technical university of munich it is one of the top it is actually considered the mit of germany so it is it is very popular in so it, these universities aap target kar sakte ho and as i say 318 universities hai germany mein education de sakte ho wahan se aap us bhi ja sakte ho masters karke okay 
then uh, scholarship opportunities ye link aap ja sakte hain there uh, you can go for this website research in germany land of ideas so it has it is from a federal ministry of german uh, education and research aap ja sakte hain funding for phd students and there is a big scholarship known as dad fellowship dad bahut common hai germany ke liye and dad dad fellowship is um, uh, common to and uh, applicable to indian citizens so aap apply kar sakte ho kaise apply karna hai ye website aap ja sakte hain aur कुछ फ्रेंड्स भी है जिसने दांत बगड़ा क्लियर किया है उनका मदद भी आप ले सकते हैं ठीक है ना अपॉर्चुनिटीज आफ्टर पीएचडी आई विल गो क्विकली फैकल्टी पोजीशंस पीएचडी अगर कर लिया आपने इट्स ए इट्स ए बिग अचीवमेंट एज ए रामकरण सर का टॉक मैंने अटेंड नहीं किया मतलब आई कुड नॉट अटेंड माय स्टूडेंट्स हैव अटेंडेड बाय आई हैव रिसेंटली सीन द वीडियो ही सेड दैट दिस दिस इट रिक्वायर्स लॉट ऑफ कमिटमेंट है ना और टाइम चाहिए और आप फ्रस्ट्रेशन बहुत हो जाएंगे गाइड से आपके कलीग से बट आपको जुड़े रहना है इट्स लाइक ए प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर यूपीएससी यूपीएससी में चार अटेम्प्ट क्यों दिए जाते हैं चार बहुत लोग फोर्थ अटेम्प्ट के बाद क्योंकि तो वो प्रिजर्वेंस और वो जो पेशेंट चाहिए वो पीएचडी में भी चाहिए फाइव सिक्स ईयर चाहिए होगा उसके बाद आप फैकल्टी पोजीशंस कर सकते हैं डिफरेंट इंस्टीट्यूट यूनिवर्सिटीज आई आई टीज आई टीज वगैरह के लिए ओनली पी एच डी इज नॉट अनफ थ्री ईयर्स पोस्ट डॉक मिनिमम चाहिए एंड इन फैक्ट इफ यू हैव मोर इट्स इवन बेटर पोस्ट डॉक्टरल रिसर्चर आप कर सकते हो इंडिया एंड अब्रॉड रिसर्च साइंटिस्ट इन इंडस्ट्री पोजिशन इथ सब्जेक्ट है सम कोर एरियाज उसमें आप जा सकते हैं रेपुटेड जर्नल एडिटर ऑफ रेपुटेड साइंटिफिक जर्नल ये जॉब कोई कोई नहीं बोलता है आपको ये मैंने देखा है मेरे मेरे पी एच डी के कॉलिग्स देर दे आर एडिटर इन नेचर देर एडिटर इन देव डन पी एच डी एंड दे आर एडिटिंग इन एडिटर इन साइंस और नेचर और वन ऑफ माई कलीग वॉज एडिटर इन नेचर केमिकल बायोलॉजी विच इज ए टॉप जर्नल इन केमिस्ट्री केमिकल बायोलॉजी so they they are interested you will be still interested in science and will be interacting with the uh, scientific articles but you will not have your own lab but editing job is a very reputed job in top tier journals agar apne industry post doc kiya hai aap startup kar sakte ho entrepreneurship kar sakte ho only study is not enough ye uh, employment generation is also very important agar wo employment generation aap khud kar sakte ho startup bana ke there is nothing like it We will be like saluting people if you can give job to twenty more people with your learning in the industry or in your PhD or postdoc learning. Okay, you can uh, try for these options. Now, now how to apply for a postdoc position? Yeah, ये पहले कवर किया गया था. मैं एक स्लाइड यहाँ पे देना चाहता हूँ because postdoc is not a degree. PhD is the highest degree a university can give. Or DSc होता है UK के university में कुछ DSc. But usually PhD is the highest degree. It is a research position. It is a temporary position. It is to gain knowledge, gain, uh, gain uh, more experience. Where do you want to do? Academia versus industry. Academia में आपको papers बहुत मिलेंगे if you want from chemistry, sciences है ना. But industry में आपको real life experience मिलेगा कि industry real life problems पे काम कर रहे हैं. Papers अलग ही ना मिले. But you can become an industry. है ना startup खुलने के लिए entrepreneur बनने के लिए industry postdocs are very nice. There are a lot of uh, students I have seen going for industry postdoc. Funding is required, so uh, postdoc के लिए भी funding है. उसके लिए भी government funding देता है. Professors भी funding हो सकता है. Uh, जिस तरह PhD के लिए funding मिलता है, उस तरह postdoc के लिए भी funding available होता है. ठीक है? In India, what are the options? NPDF, National Postdoctoral Fellowship. It is offered by CERB. CERB is um, uh, Society for uh, what is that? Um, Science and Engineering Research Board. It is it is a board. For conducting science, it is for two years, fifty-five thousand per month. Rather than IPDF, every institute have their institutional postdoc fellowship. It is starts from fifty thousand. Uh, that kind of money. Why I'm? Um, uh, it looks odd if I mention money. I don't like also. But some students are very um, maybe motivated by money, and they also do not have this information. Ki kitna can I sustain myself? Fifty thousand is good. Says to sustain in India, for example, and support your family also. so you can go for a post doc and then look for a job if you are interested other than that social sciences ke liye yesha fellowship hai i see indian council of um, social sciences research so post doctoral fellowship and igi dr indira gandhi um, um, institute for developmental studies yes social sciences ke liye arts ke liye mostly post doctoral other than that fulbright nehru fulbright is a us uh, and india program fulbright nehru program and you see ds kothari fellowship hai रमन फेलोशिप है आई का सो ये आप अप्लाई कर सकते हैं रमन इज हाईली कम्पिटेटिव ओनली फिफ्टी एप्लीकेशन दे आर एक्सेप्टिंग फॉर ईयर सो आप आफ्टर पी एच डी फी वॉन्ट टू गो टू आई एस सी फॉर पोस्ट डॉग यू कैन डू दैट एब्रॉड यू कैन गो फॉर एब्रॉड में पी ए पोस्ट डॉग के लिए कोई एडवर्टाइज नहीं करता 
सो इट इज वेरी लेस पी एच डी के लिए डेवल एडवर्टाइज पोस्ट डॉक के लिए यू टू गो फॉर दी यूनिवर्सिटी वेबसाइट एंड यू टू राइट ई मेल टू प्रोफेसर सो यू कैन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम यूर फोर्थ ईयर और थर्ड ईयर ऑफ पी एच डी टू सर्च फॉर ए पोस्ट डॉक्टरल पोजिशन a potential post doctoral position so those students who are in phd let me tell you don't get just a focus on your research area that uh, wo bahut narrow minded ho jata you start reading papers about related uh, from different professors from related area so that one of those professors could become your probably a potential post doctoral advisor something like that so you can get idea more about his research so papers padhna chalu kijiye aur not 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 necessarily exactly same area you are doing so that will broaden your horizon and the thinking power contacting professors directly area of choice is important kis area mein karna chahte hain but do not repeat the same area as of phd so you try to add a additional value to your postdoc my postdoc was like more of a antibiotics and medicinal as compared to a basic biochemistry uh, related or organic chemistry in in the my postdoc in phd so i wanted to do something different so similarly you can do those who are doing say organic chemistry can go for a bio related post doc there are many good professors international fellowships are there that is as i said for germany humboldt is also for germany jsps many students i have many friends i have uh, one of my junior is in tokyo university of tokyo he was a jsps fellow german um, japan society for promotion of science so you can apply for the jsps fellowships marie curie is for france we have here a professor in mathematics he is a is a Marie Curie fellow from France and he got a very good fellowship uh, in in his postdoc so Marie Curie uh, you can apply so there are, these are some names so you have to look for these uh, websites and there there are some national agencies like in USA and it's NIH NSF uska lekin ek requirement hai ki US citizen or permanent resident hona chahiye green card holder holder hona chahiye jo aap hote nahi ho when you are doing phd so kabhi kabhi they have some international applications also you can look for those and other fellowships available in that university for example in my university uh, they have they have a web page saying that uh, why you want to do a post doc and what are the funding options what because sometime say when i was in texas texas is a very oil rich country all oil rich so there are a lot of oil companies are there so oil companies pro provide money for uh, supporting university so they can provide a professor giving money and the professor can hire a post doc but the money is coming from the oil company company so that will be mentioned in their university website so you need to look for those those information those are not available online or nobody probably will tell you okay there may be some uh, some friends who can guide you in this in that regard okay now if you have chosen to go for a job after msc um, and you have not doing phd and post doc uh, it's still fine there are many good job options where you can still attach to the subject one is teacher and assistant professor you will be teaching and a pgt teacher uh, in jnbs and kvs or many other good school aapko b ed degree chahiye assistant professor ke liye lectureship chahiye wo aap kar sakte hain there is scientist position ye chemistry physics in fact biological people bhi apply kar sakte hain iske liye gate chahiye these are some agencies bark drdo isro ye aap suna hi hoga naam ye sab ke liye gate uh, previously they used to conduct exam now gate ke through hi hota hai assistant chemist in uh, psus ongc ntpc for example i got ntpc job also after my msc but i i wanted to go for us for post doc so i could not join but my friend is uh, same uh, way he is also from msc from iit delhi previously served in ntpc madhya pradesh now he is serving in ntpc assam so he is uh, doing very well he is a general manager now in in ntpc so this kind of uh, jobs options are there which is directly linked with uh, with uh, chemistry you don't need to do phd post doc and only professor kind of job okay then assistant pro officer in iocl iocl has a good job but it needs a two year of experience that you need to take care examiner of patents patent officer uh, it is very less known job it is a cgp tdm controller general of patents and designs and trademarks it's a central government agency but many chemistry people will probably apply for it but it is a patent officer and kind of intellectual intellectual property rights uh, control so you are examiner of patents it's a central government job you can go after msc and probably go for a exam and then food related organization fs ssi uh, food safety and standards as well as food corporation of india they have a technical officer job which is uh, through the exam and interview msc chemistry students are well suited in fact biology biotechnology students food preservatives you know bahut well suited hai is job ke liye geo so these are important this is conducted by upsc 
institution minded and it is for geological survey of india so geochemists and geophysicists positions are they are in different um, the, they are very well government government jobs and they are also uh, you are still in uh, linked to the subject they are not very like you went to a bank and you forgot chemistry so here you will be doing something related to the subject then you probably don't uh, have heard of this this is known as spmcil this is security minting uh, printing and minting corporation of india it's a notes and like stamp papers and bonds and those those kind of this is central government agency like ccp tdm and they have assistant manager positions and all the science graduates are post graduates are open materials so chemistry graduates are highly material chemistry inorganic chemists are highly applicable in this kind of or metallurgy in this kind of areas and they can apply for this kind of jobs so there are many jobs where without a phd you can still link to the subject and you can serve the society in a different capacity a scientist in drdo is no less or a general manager assistant manager in omgc or ntpc is no less than a professor in serving the society so we need to think in that lines everybody has their role in the society in the private sector there are a lot of opportunities in india unfortunately it is not very more it is not very less and many students after msc don't want to go for private industries because they pay less or their work or work hours are very less but there are some good companies you can take an experience two years experience and you can go for an industry uh, a related uh, phd or postdoc okay so renbexi reddies sinzin and abot these are uh, pharmaceutical companies and organic chemistry background or even uh, inorganic chemistry students are, are highly uh, suited for this kind of jobs so this is mostly uh, chemistry oriented uh, industries then hindustan in unilever and dabar these are involved in healthcare products consumer products which you use in our day to day life consumer goods so they are also have chemistry positions now when you go to these websites you need to go for careers or work with us those kind of tabs are there there you can see and they are not advertised very often is an employment exchange mein aapko nahi milega newspaper mein probably nahi milega so you need to go there visit the website agar koi senior ne join kiya hai uske through aap jana chahiye so a context network working is very important as it was mentioned and highlighted by ram karan in the previous uh, uh, talk tata chemicals and bsf chemical making companies agriculture household na toilet mein hum use karte hain tata chemicals and there are many many companies which are making these are big names there are very small names also where they have this kind of job opportunities you probably have heard of uh, hplc and lcms this kind of instruments these are made by these companies azilent and waters azilent and waters are instrument making companies they need expertise in sciences chromatography say or separation science na physical chemistry analytical chemistry those kind of jobs are very important for these kind of companies and they have job opportunities in these areas consultant services i have seen people going for after msc tcs so it is no more related to chemistry probably but they still uh, offer um, uh, companies uh, good msc students from good universities in physics electronic devices nanotechnology related devices are good options i don't have um, proper nvidia say nvidia or other option so i don't have more sorry i don't have more data for physics similarly biology biotechnological related biologicals for example now serum institute of technology or bharat biotech who are making this your covaxin and covishield vaccines what do you think their job profile most of them are biotechnologists or people from biology background so recently there is a company next to iit dharwar which is uh, which is making uh, the sputnik vaccine in large, large scale sputnik is a russian made vaccine you all know that has uh, indian government has given the permission and they have in in collaboration with this reddies lab in hyderabad they are over producing this sputnik and they recently interviewed in iit and other job profiles they need people from biochemistry biology background so you can see these companies they make antibodies and antibiotics they these companies have lot of uh, importance in masters level students so you can always that option is always open in if you go to us and you have done a phd no need to, no need to do post doc i have seen people going for these big companies like pfizer novartis mark they make they make they make they make drugs which are like billion dollars for example you probably have heard of drug taxol is anti cancer drug used in breast cancer and other cancers and uh, one of these companies have the proprietary right for that making that compound it has a synthetic steps uh, many uh, then that that is distributed all over the world it is a brilliant billion dollar industry so one drug one one particular drug in cancer there are many cancer drugs but that one particular drug uh, making billions of dollars and 
chemistry graduates are like um, post graduates are really ne needed in these kind of companies dow chemicals bsf as i said chemical making companies and into these um, it based companies intel google facebook i don't know what chemistry has my my phd juniors in from texas a and m university many of them engineers in intel and they are earning lot of lot money lot more money than a professor will do for example in usa itself so but probably that is their line of work and they want to interact or uh, grow in industry environment so they 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 do uh, technological uh, they do um, uh, innovations in those kind of industries there are many small com companies if you are already planning to go to us say have a have a uh, have a eye on these companies in boston california new york and these kind of areas where they are recruiting students from chemistry background physics background and you know, biology background and you can go for biology uh, those kind of job profiles they one of the uh, one of the pros pros meaning positive points of industry is that they pay very well high high salaries okay but the con is that your job is risky uh, whenever the market is down uh, your job may be on the line it is not a a permanent job like a the professor or something like that so that's why many hesitate but it's not like that if you do well you will be keep growing in the industry oil based companies are also there like shell and marquis they may be uh, mostly from inorganic chemistry background they will like to recruit 